As a professional food photographer with a background in hospitality, Dario Milano has an eye for detail and a passion for telling a story through his photography. From studio sets, shoot the chef competitions and countless client briefs to produce beautiful photos, Dario Milano is a storyteller with a camera. He loves to shoot on location and every new place, brand or subject presents its own unique challenges. To him, photography is all about problem solving. So given the necessary time and resources to create beautiful and enticing images of food and drink, the brief is essential. Dario's a creative, but in his own words, it's not my restaurant, it's not my brand. He works best collaboratively when there is some sort of creative figure working with him. So with that, we've chosen three bartenders who in their own right have great creative skill and an abundance of artistic flair. Each will represent a brand, and the challenge is to take that brand, the story, the drink, and translate this into a photograph that people can relate to. After all, a picture tells a thousand words, right? Well, let's watch and see if it tells a story. How important is the look of a drink? I think sort of with um, cocktails, the first thing they look at is the look. When food comes out, people look at the food and go, oh my God, that looks amazing. And it has to come to the same senses of what a drink's out. We want to make sure that when drinks come out, they look like that. Because the first thing they see is, this is beautiful. I started as a chef in Italy, uh, where I had a restaurant for five years. And then um, I moved to Australia, age 33. Um, we're chefing for a little bit over here. But I discovered that I had a passion for photography. And the two things together uh, were really uh, fulfilling my desire to create. So. I pick up a camera and um, I taught myself how to photograph food and drinks. Every day I wake up with the desire to become a better photographer, to take better pictures. It's actually very difficult because there are a lot of things that need to come together uh, to get a perfect image. Uh, my idea, my philosophy is to keep things simple but doing things right. I mean, I know it sounds uh, Obvious, but um, it's not. Hashtag Benley Rum. <laughs> Benley Rum is pretty much one of the oldest working distilleries, meaning it's continuous. So nine to five shifts, not going to switch the power off. It's going to keep going. Um, fully Australian owned, made out of molasses, obviously. Um, is that an Australian molasses that they use? Australian molasses, okay. yeah. Um, aged in ex brandy vats, so you're going to get a lot of sort of um, toffee, coffee, chocolate. Really, really delicious. Just out of curiosity, what's the proof on that uh, that honey liqueur? Thirty five ABV. Oh, so no slouch. No slouch at all. My name is Quinn. I've uh, been bartender coming on to about six years now. Um, at this moment, so I'm a resident bartender at. China Diner, a new venue that's just opened up in what's affectionately known as the Bondi Bubble. With my style of bartending, I like to keep things really, really simple, start off with a good product and then sort of just work around there. The drink I'm making today is inspired by uh, one of the characters behind Bean Lee Rum. Um, I've called it Bosun Bill's Wake Up Call. So the ingredients that I'm using today for the drink, I'm using 50 mils Bean Lee's Honey Liqueur. 15 mils cherry herring liqueur. On top of that, I'm also using 30 mils fresh pressed coffee, a bar spoon of caster sugar. I've added some egg white as well, just to give it a really nice texture. Shake, strain, really, really nice fancy rocks glass. Um, so with a mint sprig, so the mint sprig just gives a really nice sort of freshness and herbaceousness that goes really well with the, um, the drink itself. Quince drink is um, a coffee-based cocktail, um, pretty dark. So we decided to uh, work on contrast. We picked up a brighter background so that we could have the coffee cocktails stand out against it and we could make a real hero. We used the coffee beans and the sugar um, and, and that's it, that's the story. It's a simple cocktail, it doesn't need the overstyling. Well, if you like what you just saw, please stick around because we'll be right back with a lot more great stuff right after this.
my parents always wanted me to go to university to study some like engineering, to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, whatever. And they want me to get an advanced education. But I wanted to do something that I loved. And like as Confucius said, if you do something you love, you're never going to feel like you're going to work another day in your life. So I chose the best of both worlds. I came to the European Bartender School in Sydney. The curriculum for EBS has been written by some of the best bartenders in the whole world and that's something that really attracts me. I get to learn about flaring, theory, cocktails and many other skills that I can take with me after when I leave it. Alright guys, today I want to talk with you about liqueurs. I was just thinking I was going to give you a little rundown on how this week is going to look because we're entering the final week now. Huh? So in less than a month I'm going to get my qualification and I'm just going to throw myself out there, get a job and rock everyone's world. And now I have an advanced qualification that lets me work anywhere and I'll never have to feel like I work another day in my life, just like the Chinese philosopher said. We're here at the Styling Intervention, doing a masterclass with photographer and styling guru Dario Milano. If you want to tell a story about um, a product, about a dish or a food, like in this case, my suggestion is to start from the hero, start from the main uh, ingredient, start from the cocktail. Let the drink uh, tell you how it wants to be styled. Uh, ultimately, it's all about the drink. Everything else should be complementary. Everything else is just coming there to bring things together. Uh, Some people might get put off by a, a gin that is like overly floral. I mean, what would you say to, to those people? It's, it's tipping its hat to do like a floral note. There is a really rose petal and sort of floral, but with a citrus backing. So it's quite good for your sort of martinis, but also then for your Tom Collins and stuff because of the citrus and the floral notes will still come through. It helps create a, a flavour palette that anybody can enjoy, okay. is the point of the geranium gin. Hi, my name's Tom Price. I've been bartending for about six years now. I currently work at the Roosevelt in the colourful Potts Point. The style of bartending I like is really simple, classic, nothing over the top fancy, just really nice, fast, simple drinks. Today I'm using uh, Fintiman's mixers. These are a very traditional English style mixer, um, naturally brewed using the finest quality ingredients. And a lot of the, a lot of the uh a lot of the Fentimans that are coming out are pretty non-standard. I mean, there is the tonic yeah. and, and ginger beer, which I believe was the yeah, first. Yeah, but like the ginger beer is a spicy ginger beer, and they were one of the first people to really do that. It was a, a sort of a, not the normal sort of Bundaberg ginger beer. Then I mean, their traditional Victorian lemonade. Like most people, when they order a lemonade, expect a clear one. I kind of like the old sort of the yeah, um, like traditional solo. style. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, like a, uh, yeah, um, Actually, and then they've also sauce. got their, like, their cherry cola. Today I'm making a cocktail called the Floral Collins. The ingredients for my drink are 20 mils of fresh lemon juice, 10 mils sugar syrup, 60 mils of geranium gin, made in England using 300 year old traditional recipes, but also with the addition of geranium. combined in a glass and then topped with the Fintiman's Rose Lemonade. It's a very simple, light, refreshing drink. Tom's cocktail on the other side is bright and colourful. The light is flooding the scene. All that stands out uh, is actually the petal roses uh, and the uh, garnish uh, with the lemon slice uh, on the cocktail. It's a very peaceful and very bright and um, happy image, um, still very simple.
They gave you Van Gogh, which is yeah. obviously probably the set, set the imagination the light. Tell course. us a little bit about uh, this beautiful Dutch vodka. And what they've done with these products, which I, which I love the most, is that they're allowing themselves to create things that no one else has done. And they've with really regard to flavors, you mean? Absolutely, oh, yeah, yeah. of course, yeah, absolutely flavor based. Uh, and so you're looking, I mean, absolutely, Dutch caramel, you know, perfect. You've, they've got my, my absolute favorite. Um, and, and you know. Peanut butter jelly time. Thank you very much, Sal, yes, absolutely. It's peanut butter jelly, I mean, come on. Dutch when you smell it, it tastes like peanut butter and jelly. Oh, that's, that's a pretty weird combination to have in a vodka. So I, like, how, how many flavors did these guys have? I counted count nine. nine you counted nine? Hello, my name is Simon Tui. I uh, have been bartending for about eight years now and I'm currently working at The Crossing in Bondi Beach. I no longer like the idea of these, uh, of these serious drinks. Drinks to me are meant to be fun. And so that's why in a lot of the drinks we make, it's blended, it's vibrant, it's, it's, it's tall, it's laughter, for, you know, laughter worthy, and it reminds you of being a kid again. The brand I'm working with today is Van Gogh Vodka. Um, they do an amazing array of flavored vodkas, one of the largest in the world. Um, and it's something that when you look at these flavors, it actually reminds you of something that you were, as if you're working, walking into a candy store. The drink I'm making today is called Cake. Uh, the ingredients are Van Gogh Dutch Caramel of 60 mils. You're looking at um, 60 mils of coconut water, 10 mils of lime juice, fresh lime juice, a, a slight pinch of citric acid, 30 mils of condensed milk, a whole lot of ice, about double the size of what the liquid is. Put it all in the blender, blend it up. And put it in your tall glass. You want to garnish that with a couple of straws, of course, because you're not going to drink that uh, without those straws. And then make the garnish fun. Add some hundreds and thousands, some Cocoa Pops, some whatever you think is confectionery, and, uh, and, and enjoy. Simon's cocktail. Uh was a very challenging image to take. Uh, we use fresh paint to create the background. It's a very creative, very funny idea. On the other hand, uh, a little bit challenging photography-wise because uh, um, we have to deal with a very, very busy background. So um, very simple lighting, just one light uh, coming from the back and the side. Uh, good contrast, uh, vibrant colors. Uh, and, uh, and a beautiful image. Well, I think what I learned today, uh, especially working with Dario, was just the amount of attention to details required to make a drink look really good and presentable. Um, so definitely I've taken a lot out of it as far as sort of um, understanding the presentation, the style, um, and how to make a drink look good. What I've learned from today is how you compose a picture. It's not just about the drink, it's about the brands and how you tell the story of the brand through the cocktail and through its surrounds. Everything that we have and everything that we produce is an open canvas. When you see a photo of it and you go, wow, that is something I really, really want. That is something I really want to taste. So today my, my, my learning process was that everything that could be done and what everyone, that all the other bartenders did was create an amazing drink with an open canvas. Right, so just to give you some simple tips for a drink styling and drink photography. Uh, main thing, your lighting. Keep it simple. Your props, watch the textures and the color schemes. Uh, the hero is the cocktail and you use the fresh ingredients as the main features rather than metallic or wooden objects. As with any masterclass, we hope you're taking something away with you. Something learned, something studied, something fantastic that you can use that will excite you, that it will entice you to create not only a drink but a story and showing you that sometimes it's not that easy but when you get the right pieces together, you can create something incredibly beautiful that does tell that story. Because as we said before, that picture can tell a thousand words.